Hey you guys! Welcome to this channel. I'm Christine, psychologist and coach. So this is my cousin. Yeah. Again. Again. My yeah. name is Lilia and uh, yeah, I'm a developmental therapist and I also work as an accountant. Oh really? Okay. Yes, Congratulations. I, I love numbers. <laughs> so today we are going to talk about toxic relationship. That is like very exciting. Wow, yeah. Very exciting. I have like nine signs of a toxic relationship that I want to inform you of, because if you are in one, please get out of one. Wow. Yeah. yeah or, that's or, a clear message. Yeah, or try to get your partner to seek therapy, please. Run. Yes. <laughs> so, we, uh, we both have experience in this. Yeah, we do. Yes, I have uh, since I was a teenager, so I can uh, talk about some examples of it, but I'm also going to use my like psychology background to inform you guys about this. So. If I have some examples, it's gonna be based on like maybe men, but that does not mean that women cannot show this behavior, but it's just like my own experience, but I'm also gonna talk like from my background. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And you also, because you yeah. are a straight woman. I'm a straight woman. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> so, okay. Number one, I mean, toxic communication. So instead of kindness and respect, that is like very normal in a like normal relationship, then maybe you're being criticized and maybe your friends and family are also being criticized or even like you become like a joke in social settings. Yeah. That, so. that is uh, one sign. Yeah. Yeah. I experienced that a couple of times when I was in my toxic relationship. I, I don't want to say that the person itself is toxic, but the relationship itself, because yeah. I think that the person who is like, uh, being or showing toxic behavior that's better like has some kind of trauma yeah. and hasn't really worked on themselves yeah right do you agree on that yeah i agree on that. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly so and number two that i wrote down is envy and jealousy and mistrust so it's normal and it's cute of course that you're a little bit jealous or your partner's a little bit jealous but if it's like having a negative effect on your relationship to the extent that you're fighting a lot or like this is becoming excessive, then it's really toxic. <clears throat> yeah, it is. It's a, yeah, it's a difficult to have this, uh, like you're always being like, uh, how do you call it? Hmm. The person doesn't trust you at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always being suspected of something. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like if I wanted to go out and meet my friends and such, then uh, I had to come home at a certain time. Wow. I had to sleep uh, at his place. Yeah. So it would be like 100% uh, uh, sure that I wasn't doing something with somebody else or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's also like a controlling behavior. Yeah, it is. Yeah. How can you decide if you're going out with friends when you want to come home? I mean, if it's boring, you come home <laughs> early. If it's yeah. a lot of fun, then you yeah. come home late. Well, you shouldn't decide, but maybe you can have an agreement. Okay, I'm not going to stay until like six in the morning because then you're talking. No, just kidding. Yeah. But <laughs> like, but like, yeah. I mean, you can be like, you know, sending some messages, but it shouldn't be like uh, influencing your life in a negative way. You shouldn't be like in the phone all the time when you're out with your friends, like reporting to that person when you're coming home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because then it's taking time for your, uh, from your friends. Yeah. yeah. And then I wrote down lack of self-care because if you start like neglecting your own health or your like hobbies because the, uh, the relationship is taking so much of your energy, then it's a little bit toxic. Like you maybe stop going to the gym, you stop seeing your friends or you stop doing things that are really important to you and then you, you, that you used to do before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then... Uh, I wrote number four is your outer relationship suffer. So like you start you, you start to neglect your family and friends because uh, the other person that you're with is kind of controlling you and your behavior to the extent that you like are like being a little bit like always together. Yeah. Alone. Yes. Preferably. Yeah, that was like you and your yeah, relationship. Was, yeah. we, we never met anybody and my <laughs> friends were not good enough. And uh, if I invited him to come to see my family when they were in uh, capital uh, visiting me, yeah. he never showed. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then I wrote down a shame. Like, you feel ashamed because your gut feeling tells you that this relationship is not good for you. And probably your outer circle knows it too, and then you start kind of hiding the relationship because you feel ashamed. Yeah, I had 
that many times. You had that many times? Yeah. When my friends uh, realized that I was a little bit disappearing from, you know, yeah. communicating with them and such. Yeah, exactly. My my best friend, one of them. Yeah. <clears throat> she realized that straight away that, okay, she's together with him again. Yeah. And but, I didn't want to tell anybody. Yeah, and I was, th I was thinking when I was in my relationship that I knew deep down inside that this was not like the relationship for me. But still you're in it. It's like... But, but you should always listen to your gut feeling, but sometimes it gets very blurry, your gut feeling, because you're overthinking things. And of course, if you're in a toxic relationship, you're always overthinking everything. Yeah, it is. Even though you're not like the overthinking person. Yeah, exactly. And then I wrote down number six, it's like, your needs are not being met. Remember that you told me that many times you needed like some kind of emotional support from your ex. Yeah. And always when you needed that, he was never there. Yeah. That's like a perfect example. Exactly. I, I called him and asked, can I come over? I, I feel a little bit, uh, you know, I'm small and I'm uh, small, emotional. You yeah. are small. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was smaller. <laughs> okay, you're and then, yeah, yeah, and you're... then he wasn't like available or said just straight, no, I can't. Yeah. Even though he were, wasn't, you know, he was just at home and didn't have any, Yeah. not doing anything. So, yeah, it was like, uh, I don't know, the power of denying me of this support. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's like a hot and cold. Yeah. Like it's being very like uh, nurturing and friendly and caring, but then it's like the opposite. Yeah. It's like these extremes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I wrote number seven, it's like disrespect, you know, being like, like maybe like chronically late or like uh, canceling on an event or maybe like canceling on your vacation, like, like, like these kind of things. Yeah. I, I had it like a few times that uh, his family invited me to like uh, events, yeah, like uh, marriage and christianing a kid and such, and he asked me at the last minute not to come. Wow. So okay. I was, uh, okay, so he asked you not to come, but yeah. yeah, okay, wow. I was invited from the person, but he asked me not to come. Wow. That must have been uh, really nice. Uh, yeah, it was pretty hurtful. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. So, uh... And then I wrote, number eight, it's like obsessing about this person. Because if you're in a healthy, good relationship, of course, you're obsessing about the person the first three to six months. That's like the honeymoon phase that you like are always thinking about the person. But then you shouldn't be obsessing about the person if it is it's like a healthy relationship. Yeah. But if it's unhealthy, then you're constantly thinking like, oh my God, like, what is this person doing now? Is this person like doing drugs, is this person drinking too much, is this person like gambling, is this person this or that, like you're obsessing about the person. Yeah, if, if, if the relationship is like feels right, yeah. then you're not constantly thinking about the other person, what he's doing, uh, you know, is he meeting somebody else, is he talking to another lady or whatever. So yeah. it's like uh, affecting your brain activity like the whole day constantly. Yeah, and it's maybe because you, uh, when you're in a relationship with a, like a sick person, I want to say sick person, like mentally sick person, because this is not like healthy, no. then you often become sick too. Yeah, I experienced that, that I was, uh, yeah, I didn't like myself. Yeah, or maybe sick is like a wrong word, but like mentally like unstable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I had that. And then the last thing I wrote is like conflict addiction. That is so interesting because when you're in a toxic relationship, you're always having these conflicts and sometimes you can get addicted to it because it releases a lot of like uh, hormones, like cortisol hormones and uh, uh, testosterone and, and then also oxytocin because you are going to experience some kind of like loving, um, like how to say, like, like you fight and then the person feels so guilty that it shows you the opposite. It shows you like a lot of love and affection and everything and then of course you release this oxytocin. Yeah. So it's like two extremes. You get like uh, addicted to it. Yeah. Being like in a bad uh, mentally state and then in a good. Yeah. Or emotional state. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think I, think I had that because it was getting like uh, so weird. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, to summarize this toxic relationship, I want to say, like, like I, I, for, I can speak for myself, I was becoming, like, this really bad version of myself. I didn't even like myself. I was, I was, like, very sad, like, often. And I was withdrawing, maybe, from friends and my, like, activities. Yeah. And then I was, like, often angry and frustrated because 
in my toxic relationship, there was a lot of like uh, mistrust. And I as a person am very loyal. I, I'm not a cheating person or a lying person in general. Well, in general, like I'm not. This is like one of my like values. And when that is being questioned so much and like so often, like, like constantly, I just became so angry. You became a person that you really didn't, didn't know. Yes, yeah. because, uh, yeah, I can't be angry, but not like all the time with another person. No, exactly. So in the end, I didn't really like myself. I was like, what is this? Like constantly fighting and it's so draining. Yeah. I, I was like with myself, I felt like uh, in the end, I was like a passenger in my own life. Oh, because, I heard that among my clients. <laughs> because uh, I was avoiding conflicts. Yeah. So I just said yes to everything. Yeah. So I felt like uh, I didn't know if I was coming or going. It was yeah. like my wings had been cut off also. Yeah, I, but, but I, this I is was a... just like a passenger in my own life. It was very, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is so interesting. When I heard this uh, expression like passenger in your own life, it means that you almost have no control in your life. Yeah, exactly. I, you're just I, like I, a, a watcher of your own life. It's yeah. like you're watching a movie, but you're not really participating in it. Because maybe because your needs are not being met. Yeah. And nobody's listening to your opinion mm -hmm. because the other person is taking all the decision yeah. based on their needs. Yeah, exactly. Wow, this is really interesting, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's very interesting. But, but th then I yeah uh, about the when you step out of a toxic relationship and get into another relationship. Yeah. Can you then maybe have uh, the the previous relationship affecting your new relationship? Yes, that is so common. I remember when I stepped out of mine. I thought to myself, I'm never going to go into a relationship again, like never, that is like, and that is like so toxic too, to think like that, because then I'm generalizing that every relationship is going to be like that, yeah. but also, you, you told me about your friend that had been experiencing some symptoms from the old relationship to the new one, how was that again? Yeah, it was like, uh, she felt that, that she couldn't be like honest, she wanted to go out and just have a nice time with friends, Yeah. like going to the bar and maybe yeah. dance a little bit or something, and she was like uh, experiencing that she couldn't be like, she was like withdrawing the, the statement that she really wanted to go out and have a nice time, yeah. but she said, oh, I'm just gonna go for one or two drinks and then I'm go going home early. So she okay. wasn't like telling okay. totally the truth. So she was kind of lying. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah Because yeah. it's uh, still in her head like she's uh, avoiding conflicts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when that, ha uh, that happens, or if that happens to you, then you really like, let's say that you are the person asking me if I'm going out, yeah. and I feel this like symptoms, or like I experience some thoughts like, oh my god, why is this person asking me? Is this a bad thing? Or whatever. It's like perfectly normal. Yeah. But then maybe like stop for a while and don't answer right away, but establish this contact to yourself and like listen to yourself and ask yourself, why am I experiencing this emotion? And then maybe you're going to find out because yes, I had like this bad relationship with this person that was questioning everything and mistrusting me, but this person is not that person, at least until that person shows you otherwise. Yeah, exactly. It's not fair against the other person, but no. uh, of course you yeah. can't maybe help it in the beginning. No, but that's why you have to like take a step back and yeah. really like maybe uh, uh, analyze these feelings that you have and these thoughts exactly. and then answer. Yeah. Exactly. Because you don't have to answer right away. No. But maybe like, you know, like be open and like curious about your feelings and emotion. This is part of mindfulness that I like so much. And then answer. Yeah, exactly. Are you then talking about a text message? Not like uh, communicating like face to face? You can do both. Okay. But it's easier with a text message because then you don't have to answer right away. But yeah. if, you're, if you're sitting with a person, you can also just like sit for a while and then think like, uh, to yourself, like why you are experiencing, maybe you get like a, I don't know, a knot in the stomach or something like, like also physical symptoms. Exactly. And then you can like uh, establish this contact to yourself and ask yourself, okay, why am I experiencing this? Yeah. And then you can answer like, yeah, I am going out and see the person reaction. Yeah. And when you see the person reaction, you're going to find out that this is not the same person, of course. And this friend of mine also experienced uh, one thing that uh, she really wanted to, yeah, meet friends again. Yeah. And then uh, this guy uh, wanted to meet her also. Yeah. And she was in a conflict. Should I throw my friends under the bus? Yeah. Because he wants to meet. Yeah. Or and then she was basically onto throwing her friends under the bus to meet him, even mm -hmm. though she didn't want it. 
because ah, okay, because okay. in yeah, the previ yeah. previous relationship yeah there was like a factor like I don't trust you if you go out tonight and I love you less if you go and meet them and yeah, yeah, don't yeah. spend time with me so she had this like two incidents that she was like really unsure what to do or what yeah. to say but meeting your friends should never be issue in any relationship unless no, you're know. meeting them every single day exactly. and you're never meeting the person you're dating or in a relationship with exactly. I mean this should be like always a balance yeah I know so you should trust your own instinct if you want to meet your friends then you should go meet your friends if you already have plans with them yeah. and then see the person reaction yeah Exactly. Right? But this, like, yeah. It came unexpectedly to her. Yeah, yeah, basically. yeah. She didn't yeah. realize until she was uh, seeing a guy after a long time being single. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think always uh, if you experience a toxic relationship or had this, then I think it's good to talk to somebody about it. Like, get some, like, tools to how to not bring your past into the current or next relationship. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, this was it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have some comments about this, then leave a comment and we can take that up in the next video, me or you or us or whatever. <laughs> and yeah, I hope you liked it. I hope it was beneficial. And please follow me on my Instagram account, mentorbeat.dk. And yeah, that was it, right? Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Loved it. <laughs>